Hey, what is up, mortals? It is. Welcome to part 1 season 1 What Deku Had a Namu. I just wanted to greet you guys by just saying. Sit back and relax, you're in for a treat. So, we begin. As he sped through the city he felt something slip out of his pocket. Unfortunately due to the urgency of the situation he was unable to inspect what had fallen. It took some time but he was able to find Ida. Izuku zoomed through the alley, cocked his fist back, and slammed it right in the face of a katana-wielding madman. The assailant staggered back putting distance between the prone form of Ida and himself. Bingo, he was right on the money. When Ida looked up he saw the familiar green unkempt hair of Midoriya. The hopeful turbo hero hadn't expected anyone to come to his rescue, much less his friend. Tenya Ida expected an intimate duel for justice. Ending in his victory and the hero killer behind bars. Instead he was incapacitated. And though he never asked for it, relying on Izuku to save him, he would start to berate his reckless friend for his audacious actions and interference. Deku ignored his friend. Instead using this moment to pat his back pocket before pausing. The item he dropped earlier was his cell phone. Shaken, but undeterred, Izuku got into a fighting stance. No help was coming. I can't leave you here, Ida, because it's like All Might said giving help that's not asked for, is what makes a true hero. So I'll save you and the other hero just like All Might would. Nervous and uncertain, Izuku would give a weak grin. Unknowingly excited his opponent with his declaration. Before the inevitable clash began, Ida offered what little information he had on the hero killer, Midoriya. Don't let him cut you, I can't move. He cut me then my body shut down. As Izuku processed the information, Stain threw himself at him, blade in hand posed to slash the hero hopeful. Deku met the killer's charge dodging underneath it before leaping into the air and slamming his fist into the villain's skull. Acting quickly he went into rescue mode, lifting Ida in a fireman carry before pivoting in the direction of the other hero. Without warning Izuku's legs gave out from under him, dropping Ida in the process. The two teens looked up finding the fanatic gleam of Stain's devilish eyes. You prioritized rescue over seizing the opportunity your attack granted you. Not that it would have made a difference. I'm just impressed. You're a true follower of All Might's legacy. You're worthy of living. It's a shame the same can't be said about these two. The mass murderer raised his blade to bring an end to the blue-haired boy. Wait. The green-haired boy yelled up with a shaky voice. I know why you're doing this. I know how you feel. You want to make the world better. To get rid of fake heroes but you're only making things worse. Izuku spoke, looking the man in the eye without fear. People can change and embrace a better path. The right path. But that can't happen if they're all dead. Izuku continued with his heart on his sleeves. Offering its unfiltered contents to the manic killer, Stain whipped up some of Ida's blood with his katana. Before lapping it up with his ghastly purple tongue. Intently the killer's eyes looked into the innocent pools of emerald beneath him. You're an honest kid. Little hero, it'd be a lie if I said I wasn't moved. However, my work is more important than your ideals. The only way to cure this pestilence is to cut off the putrid flesh poisoning the body of heroism. The killer brought his blade down to kill what was in his eyes the lesser of the two. If you judge others who holds you accountable for your mistakes, Izuku screamed causing the blade to miss its target by mere centimeters. What did you say to me, boy? Stain asked with a dangerously low growl. Stain had once thought he could spare this boy's life but his condescension had twisted something in the man. He would give the boy one chance to explain himself. Then Stain would kill him. Elaborate, child. Ingenium was a genuine hero. And you crippled him. The hero killer didn't seem impressed by what he heard but what he didn't know was that Izuku was far from finished. He's worked with vigilantes to protect dozens of people most heroes ignored. He even offered them a place in his agency or helped them get their hero license so that they could legally protect people. When the vigilante crawler needed help to rescue Pop Step from the trigger manufacturers, he not only came to his aid but broke the law to save her life. Pop Step's body was being controlled by a bee villain. If Ingenium wasn't there it would have ripped its way out of her brain and possessed someone else. Izuku spoke showing intimate knowledge that not even Ida himself knew about his brother. Stain began to feel an odd sense of deja vu. He became Stain after Stentil failed. Due to his weaker resolve and on that night it was Crawler who had degraded that person. He had suffered physical defeat at the hands of another. But the psychological battle was won by the Crawler. Now here was another. Challenging his new ideals, his evolution with facts and passion. The two were so similar that the killer's mind began to twist the visage of the teens before him into those of Knuckle Duster and the Crawler. His gut nodded as he felt the pressure of a phantom hand take grasp of his heart and pull him away in warning. He elected to ignore it, as Blade aimed directly at the illusion of the Crawler. I will never falter in my convictions, boy. You will not break what I have become. 
Just as the tip of the blade made contact with Izuku's suit he regained control over his motor function. Delaware Smash The baby-faced teen sacrificed his right index finger to send a bullet of wind at the raving murderer. Ada I'll draw him away. When you feel better get help. Ada cried out for his friend to stop but it fell on deaf ears. Foregoing Grand Torino's teachings the Emerald Hero activated full cowling to the max his body would allow. The hero and villain violently danced around each other in a circle of blood and ideals. When Stain closed the distance Izuku used a Delaware smash to push him away. When Izuku got in position for a knockout blow, Stain would throw a barrage of knives. This carried on until all but two fingers on Izuku's right hand were broken. Distress clear on his face. Deku peered behind him. Ida and the other hero were still out of commission. What's wrong, Brett? Stain mocked. Noticing Izuku's worry, finally realized you're fighting a pointless battle. No, a hero doesn't abandon those in need. I'll beat you and be just like All Might. Stain snarled at the teen. Izuku was driving the man mad. If the killer didn't kill the teen soon he would lose himself. What's more, that phantom hand was practically crushing his heart. Stain from the corner of his eye saw something that was sure to shift the boy's attention. What did you say again a hero doesn't abandon those in need right? Well what would you call him? On the end of the dank alley the other hero could be seen trying to sneak away. When he was noticed by Izuku's eye he cursed. Damn it, what are you doing? Keep fighting so I can get away. He half demanded, half pleaded. Take Ada with you. Izuku advised expectedly. The hero shook his head. You got yourselves into this and you can get yourselves out. Running away. Leaving the two youths to their fate the hero didn't look back. In a flash a steel blade sunk into Izuku's right shoulder. The veteran didn't waste his time. M-I-D-O-R-I-Y-A. Ada called out to his friend. Smash. Izuku used OFA 100% in his left arm on reflex. Breaking the limb, Stain dodged under the thunderous fist but was sent flying to the end of the alleyway. Crashing into a nearby building by the air pressure created in its wake, Izuku fell to a knee bleeding profusely from his wounds. The blade still sticking in his shoulder Izuku elected to leave it in. Fighting to his feet Izuku made his way toward Ida with a pained smile. Are you okay? Ida. Tears streamed down the armored teen's face. All of his friend's injuries and their near-death experiences had been his fault. Midoriya. You. How could you do this to yourself? He asked. Voice cracking with shame and disappointment in himself. Because you're my friend. And I believe in you. Izuku answered. His voice hoarse and shaky. Let's get out of here. Sensation returned to Tenya's body allowing him to slowly get back onto his feet. The taller boy's emotions were running all over the place. Midoriya was the better hero by far and he and his selfishness had nearly killed him. Before either could say another word two blades shot across the alley one impaling Midori and his left calf and the other embedded itself in Ida's right cheek. Ida fell to his back clutching his face in shock. Deku turned to face the charging villain. Without a word the two threw themselves at each other. Midori with his right arm calling on the power of OFA and Stain with a single bowie knife in hand. S-M-A-S-H, D-I-E. The two sounded off together. Midori's fist reached Stain first. But as it did the youth heard a loud crackle and pop. In his haste Midoriya put too much of OFAS power into his arm, causing the limb to shoot off at shoulder level in a violent explosion of flesh and bone. In the end his attack sputtered out before it could do enough damage to take out the hero killer. Stain was sent flying again but only by a few feet and upon realizing what happened stopped. In his frenzy to prove himself he'd broken someone who showed not only determination but a spirit willing to sacrifice everything for another. A truth that was made further evident by the clenched fist resting at his feet. Shame washed over him as he watched the child he tried so hard to kill agonizing on the ground before unconsciousness claimed him. Stain had been defeated. His idealism was worthless if he himself destroyed those he so desperately wished to prop up. Now with a lost sense of purpose. The killer dropped his weapon and fled the scene to reflect on his actions. Midsection, before we get back into the story, I would like to say that we've got a second channel called Anime Deep Dive. Anime Deep Dive goes over the hard facts of the anime presented. Now in case, you guys didn't know, we have a third channel called We the Celestial Naruto What If. We the Celestial Naruto What If mainly focuses on our Naruto What If series. If you are interested in content like this, please go check the description below or Click the eye icon in the top right corner. Now with that out of the way, let's get back into the story. Tenya quickly regained his senses and picked up his friend and as fast as he could rushed him to a hospital. Tenya's disgust with himself grew as Midoriya's unconscious form shivered from blood loss. How could he explain this to anyone without wanting to renounce himself as a hero? Tenya felt that the right was lost to him forever. He was no hero. 
He was a failure who had crippled his dear friend. Midoriya was taken in for emergency surgery and upon realizing Ida further admonished himself for forgetting his friend's arms. The young man would have to explain what happened two times that night. Once to the authorities and the second to Midoriya's mother. The poor woman wailed clutching her heart before collapsing in a heap of tears. Ida wanted to comfort her but he only made things worse. She fainted soon after from a panic attack and was taken away by the hospital staff. Shoto Todoroki All Might, Gran Torino and Endeavor later arrived. They'd already been briefed by the police and were waiting for Izuku in post-op. When the surgery was finally complete and Izuku was moved to another room they were allowed to see him. Hooked up to force and transfusions Izuku laid unconscious, unmoving and missing his right arm. All Might was an inconsolable mixture of grief and rage. What did he do to you, my boy? What did he do? All Might repeated in tears as Gran Torino comforted him by placing a hand on his shoulder. Endeavor watched on silently. His theories about the boy's heritage were confirmed in his eyes. The flame hero would never wish this upon his rival, even if it assured his son would be the number one hero. Seeing All Might cry over the green-haired teenager stirred emotions inside of Endeavor. Memories of his eldest son and greatest failure, Shoto. Take the time you need to grieve for your friend. I will see you in the morning, Endeavor said leaving the room. Tashinori. When the boy comes too, we will need to have a talk. His mother will never let him don another costume again. His hero career dot 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 is over. Gran Torino told his longtime student. Hearing those words caused the symbol of peace to exit the room and punch a hole in the hospital wall. When he turned back to look at Torino his patent smile was replaced with unrelenting outrage. I know, and I'll make him pay for it. The dark promise loomed in the air paralyzing all within distance of all might. But first, I need to have a chat with Native. Endeavor who was still close by chose to abandon his plans of returning home in favor of seeing more of this new All Might. Gran Torino followed behind them not wanting Toshiro to go too far. The next day All Might would give a press conference explaining the events of Hasu. With a cold menace that chilled to the bone, no one wanted to be in the room with this All Might. The symbol of peace openly called the hero killer out stating that it was only a matter of time before he found the man and brought him to justice. This would have been music to the ears of society if the words weren't being delivered so monotonous. All Might had taken this as a personal offense against himself and the world felt it. It wasn't until rumors began to spread days later, by Endeavor himself, that All Might's behavior began to make sense. The crime rate dropped drastically in Japan to 1%. No one wanted to be on All Might's radar. Not when he was seeking vengeance for his secret love child. Of course this rumor was false. But the parties who would usually deny it just didn't have the strength to hold that conversation. They were hurting and needed time to themselves. When All Might wasn't hunting the hero killer he was with Izuku and his mother. Making the rumors more credible in the eyes of society. If it were the last thing All Might ever did he'd make the man responsible pay. Five days passed and Izuku finally awakened. His reaction to seeing that his right arm was now gone broke their hearts. And that was the easy part. Telling the youth that he could no longer pursue his career as a hero destroyed them. In secret Izuku passed OFA to a reluctant blonde. After that Izuku lost the will to eat. Or look after himself. He just sat in his bed staring out his window. His trademark tears. Dried up. In a base hidden by the light of day. Stain tore into himself. He had to make this right. But how? He failed in his own personal mission and ended the career of what he now firmly believed to be All Might's son. Stain, just like Standle was dead. There was one option but he didn't trust them to not stab him in the back. Yet he had no other choice. He waited for night and for All Might to go out searching for him. Dressed as a janitor with a false nose, Stain slowly made his way to Midoriya's room. Once he was close he quickly incapacitated the guards protecting it. He crept in finding his target and to his knowledge All Might's secret lover. Upon further inspection the shine of a ring caught his attention. Stain wondered if they were married to himself before moving closer to the teen. Stain pried the hospital window open and quickly cut the teen inflicting a shallow wound. When the Izuku came to his senses he was already paralyzed. He unhooked him from the various hospital devices. Izuku kept quiet not wanting his mother to get hurt. But she would soon stir when the heartbeat monitor gave off the flat line signal. By this time it was too late for Inko to call for help. Stain leapt out of the window and fell into a dark abyss, smiling at the hero killer on the other side. A man dressed in a business suit and facial scars welcomed his return. Stain glared at the man. Remember our deal. You fix him and I'll join your little gang. And if you even think of crossing me I swear I'll. Now, now. There's no need for such hostilities. I'm a man of my word. I always keep my promises. Ye of little faith, the man said with a smile that nearly split his face. Why don't you take him to the good doctor? He has many ways to help the poor boy reach his maximum potential. 
begrudgingly. Stain rendered the teen unconscious with a hit to the back of the neck. He wouldn't take his eyes off the boy for a second. Outro no changes. Thank you all for watching the video to the end. Now there are a few more things that I'd like to go over before the video ends. On behalf of We the Celestials, I'd like to thank the writer of this video and editors for this video. Their details will be in the description. If you're a voice actor, editor or writer, or you're interested in becoming one of those, go to the Discord that is in the description of this video and hit up the head of one of those areas. We're always looking for members to join us. That's it from us for today's video. So thank you all for watching. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're interested and hit that like button if you liked the video. Until next time, peace out mortals. Have a fantastic day.